What is up guys? In today's video, I'm going to be going over several landing spots that I think are pretty underrated in Fortnite Chapter 2 Remix. As always, if you guys do find this video to be helpful, informative, interesting, remember to give it a like. Subscribe if you like to see more and comment down below where your favorite place to land has been so far in Chapter 2 Remix. And I feel like Chapter 2 Remix has several differences between more recent Fortnite seasons and just even the original Chapter 2. One thing is that it is hard to make a little bit of loot work in the current loot pool. It just feels like there's a lot of junk and it is like kind of hard to get what you actually need. So some of these spots don't have the most loot. You're going to need to like third party another location or go somewhere else to get more loot. You're probably not just going to loot, you know, less than 10 chests and then have your loot for the game. And that's kind of how I picked a lot of these spots is what can they rotate into afterwards. And then one major difference between the current Chapter 2 Remix and the original Chapter 2 Seasons is that there's a lot of rifts that were added to the map that weren't initially there in Chapter 2. And utilizing these rifts makes a lot of these other spots that maybe wouldn't have been that sought after or wouldn't have been that good back in the day a lot better. So I'll have, I should have had a picture of the rift locations on screen now, but I think learning where these rifts are and utilizing them is a big deal this season I, I see so many people talk about how there's no mobility and they have to walk across the map constantly and that just shouldn't be the case the first location we're going to talk about is going to be the slurp shack outside of the rig on the bottom left corner of the map this location only has seven chest spawns which is not a lot but it has 49 slurp barrel spawns which is incredible and most of these barrels you can get very fast by either breaking the floor that they're on or some of them are in like netting and you can just pickaxe the netting and then they break. You can get max shield here incredibly fast. And any additional shield you do get from looting, you're not going to have to use, which is great. And, and if you guys have been playing this season, you know that shield is a struggle. So just being able to quickly get full shield off the barrels makes, you know, seven chests a lot more appealing than it otherwise would be. Because you don't really have to stress that much about finding enough shield for yourself. And another thing that makes this spot quite good is that it's only a little bit of loot, so you can loot it really fast. You can get the barrels really fast. And then there is a motorboat uh, on the dock and that you can take to go to the rig to kind of like third party and clean up the rig. There is a rift near the vault at the rig. So what I like to do is take the boat to the rift and then rift onto the people fighting at the POI. Hopefully by the time you've looted this like slurp shack area, somebody is starting to fight the boss. So you can just kind of rift onto them, clean them up fighting the boss. And then now you have probably the rest of the loot from the POI if the other players have fought already. You can take that key card into the vault and then now you have a bunch of loot. You can hopefully get more shield. You can hopefully get the grappler. And so while the initial looting of the Slurp Shack is not a lot and if you, you know, wanted to land there and then just play your game out from that point forward without really getting much more loot, it's probably not going to work. But you're just using this to get an easier start to the game and then hopefully clean up the rig and then that's where you're going to get a majority of your loot. You're just going to have a timing advantage on the people on the rig because your loot is more condensed. You should be having to fight less people and you have all those slurp barrels. So I think this spot is really good. Another spot that I've been a fan of uh, even back in initial chapter two is going to be the orchard. This is a little farm that's uh, above the main frenzy farm area. This has 17 chest spawns, which is a good amount of loot. It's like solid. Unfortunately, it doesn't really have any slurp barrels or rifts, but it, what it does have is whiplash spawns, which are the fast cars. And if you have the ability to fly the car, this is basically, you know, as good or better than a rift. So I feel like with Orchard, it has enough loot to kind of stand on its own. You know, you're not always going to get the best stuff here every game, but that's just kind of how RNG goes. You should get enough loot to be able to play the game somewhat well. And it is a somewhat densely packed area, so it can be looted pretty quickly. If there are any other players that land here, those fights should, you know, happen somewhat quickly. And then you can hopefully get one of the fast cars to spawn and then go somewhere else to get loot. If I land here and don't get a grappler, I'm probably going to make my way over towards Pleasant or over towards the Dog Pound and hope to get like scrap loot from the vault. That's usually the biggest kind of struggle I have with some of these spots that don't have the most loot is just going to be getting a grappler and going to an area that has those agency chests like pleasant or the scrap loot in the vault uh, I, I think definitely does increase your chances of getting a grappler or just you know looking for fights to third party while you're in that car and then hopefully you can get one that way 
one POI that I think has like the biggest difference in terms of how it was perceived in chapter two versus now is going to be Camp Cod. This is a like island that's on the bottom right of the map. It is very out of the way. Uh, and this POI always seemed very appealing, but it has one, it has a few major flaws. This POI has a lot of loot though. It has 32 potential chest spawns and then obviously floor loot and all of that. But what made this POI so unappealing in the past is just that it's on the far edge of the map, like I said, and it takes a while to loot. It's not very condensed loot. There's like a few buildings you have to loot. And so when you had somewhere on the far edge of the map that takes a while to loot, in seasons that didn't have much mobility, this POI I felt like was often kind of a trap. Like it looked so good, but it kind of was too good to be true. With the rifts that were added in Chapter 2 Remix, I feel like this POI got a lot better because it does have a rift of its own. So, and these rifts on the map are infinite. You can use them as many times. They're always going to be there. It's not a chance. So Camp Cod getting a rift, I feel like addresses kind of the fatal flaw this spot had in the past and makes it like a pretty solid loot location it's still going to be you know somewhat secluded there shouldn't be that many people landing here uh you're probably not going to get the highest kill game from this spot but if you want somewhere more chill to land uh and still get a decent amount of loot i, I think camp cod is going to be one of the better locations one thing to keep in mind though with the rifts at this poi like I said, it's there, but the rift from the spot probably isn't going to be enough to get you where you need to go. So you're going to want to combine it with like other rifts in the area if you do want to get towards like the center of the map because it is that secluded and that far on the edge. But luckily, there are other rifts in the area that you can hopefully like rift to a rift and then from that rift, uh, maybe get where you want to go. Another spot that's going to be near Camp Cod is going to be the weather station. This is a spot that was really known in chapter two and really hyped up as like a decent like somewhat secluded spot to get easy wins it only has 13 chest bonds but it can be looted very quickly because it's basically just the main weather station and then a small house outside this it does have a choppa spawn which is great it doesn't have rifts on it but it has a helicopter so it's not like you should be having a hard time getting out of here you know uh and to my knowledge the helicopters are 100 percent spawn rate in at the helipads and then it's also near Caddy Corner, which is a spot that also has a decent amount of loot and is a spot that's very small and can be looted pretty quickly. One of the reasons why it being near Caddy Corner is nice is because this is going to be a boss spot later on in the season. The vault at Caddy Corner is already there, but you can't open it right now. I believe there's a way to glitch into it with a car. But either way, when the kit NPC does get added to Caddy Corner and you can eliminate them and get the shockwave launcher and the key card to open that vault, the weather station into Caddy Corner is probably going to be a pretty decent loot path uh, to get an easy access to that vault and that weapon because the fights at Caddy Corner are probably going to be pretty chaotic. So you're going to have an easier time cleaning that up from the weather station. But even now without that vault, I still think the weather station is a pretty decent POI. And if you don't get enough loot or you don't get what you need, you can make your way down towards Caddy Corner and then hopefully get more loot there. Uh, one of the final spots I want to talk about is going to be the islands on the northeast side of the map. There's just several of them. And again, these islands were never really the greatest spot back in the day. It's just a little bit of loot per island and then getting around was not the greatest. But with rifts being added, you can easily rift, you know, away from here after you loot your island if you're ready to, you know, continue playing the game. Or you can rift from one island to another and get access to that other loot faster. And one of the major reasons why I think this spot is going to be good is that the shark uh, POI will be added, I think, this upcoming week in the Ice Spice update. So when the shark is added and, you know, Ice Spice is there with the Mythic Scar and the Mythic Grappler, landing on one of these islands, getting a little bit of loot, and then rifting onto the shark and cleaning that POI up and getting most of your loot that way, I think is going to be a pretty decent loot path, similar to the Slurp Shack we talked about at the start of the video. The vaults have so much loot and those agency chests are really high value. So landing somewhere that's kind of low key and then getting really good timing on the vault POI when most of those players are scuffed is a really easy way to clean that up. So I think when the shark is added to the game, these islands will be a pretty decent loot spot and a pretty decent like, you know, path to getting that vault and getting that mythic easily. Um, and those are what I would consider to be some of the best underrated landing spots this season. Also wanted to quickly talk about Dirty Docks and Craggy Cliffs. Both of these are named POIs, so like everyone knows about them, you know what I mean? But in Chapter 2, I never really liked these spots because I felt like, you know, they're very far on the edge, they take a while to loot, and then the game had no mobility, literally no mobility back then, 
or basically no mobility. So it was rough. But with the addition of rifts and both of those POIs having rifts, I feel like those are also incredibly underrated for how good they are because the major downside of those POIs was how far away they were and how long they took to loot. The rifts kind of nullify them being far away and, you know, having to worry about Storm or having to worry about having an incredibly just slow, boring game because you landed there. So I feel like both 30 Docks and Craggy Cliffs got a lot better in Chapter 2 Remix than they actually were in the original Chapter 2. But that is going to be it for this video. Hope you guys found this helpful, informative, interesting as always. If you did, remember to give it a like, subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.